Can one of you name a company that came out of Stanford? You got into the investing game pretty early. I ended up landing at a venture firm um, during my sophomore year of college. It completely changed my life. What is it about Stanford? It is a very entrepreneurial place. Google, Yahoo, Snapchat, Instagram. You want to give other people that opportunity. Yeah. I'm hoping to create that same experience for our military veterans. They have the technical experience. They have the leadership experience. They just haven't been able to make the connections. Military veterans have this mindset of, I want to change the world. So we see a lot of parallels between military veterans and successful founders. The Bay Area has been the capital of the tech world for as long as most of us have been alive. It's also a place with a long military history. They're two different worlds. But now, a group of Silicon Valley investors wants to bring them together. They think the next big thing in tech could be American veterans. Ernestine Fu is telling the story of how it all began. Silicon Valley did not exist. It was basically just greenery, flowers everywhere. It was 1939, and the dean of the Stanford Engineering School encouraged Bill Hewlett and David Packard to start their company, HP, in a nearby garage. There's now a life-size model of it inside Stanford's library. This is a replica of one of their first products. Her audience on this tour, a mix of techies, investors, and future startup founders who all have one thing in common. They've all served our country in uniform. Though their jets can seem to be made out of pure adrenaline and their nerves made out of solid steel. Behind every piece of sheet metal, there are wires and circuit boards. And behind those, there are people trained to think on their feet, even when they're upside down. How many of the technologies that we take for granted today came out of the military. GPS, internet for God's sake. Tom Kalinske is one of Fu's longtime mentors. He's been CEO of Mattel, Sega, and a whole list of other toy and game companies. He was also an army tank commander. Whether they're an enlisted guy like me or an officer, it's very difficult when they get out to make that transition. In the decades since HP was founded, Stanford has become the place where countless startups begin. This is the first server that they built for Google. Wow. Fu realizes being part of this community gave her a head start. She made the cover of Forbes magazine when she closed her first startup deal at age 20, making her Silicon Valley's youngest venture capitalist. This is the maker space at Stanford. While her classmates were building prototypes and writing code for their startups. What made you interested in backing those companies? For me, it wasn't enough to just focus on one company, one idea, but I love the idea of being able to have a broad portfolio of companies to support. And she did it all while earning her bachelor's, two masters, and a PhD from Stanford. By the way, Ernestine is one of the smartest people I've ever known in my life. Fu comes from a military family and married a former Navy SEAL. One thing that I've noticed is if you serve in the military, you don't necessarily have access to the best opportunities in Silicon Valley compared to someone who maybe went to Stanford for undergrad. But now she's set out to change that with a venture fund called Brave Capital and events like this called Brave Convenings. We're providing exposure to this is what's happening in Silicon Valley. This is the behind the scenes view. Today's theme, transportation, from the Stanford solar car to the robo taxi startup Motional. What is it like to get into the vehicle? How does someone call the vehicle? Brave Capital invests in technology with military applications, but also our nation's future infrastructure. And yes, that includes self-driving cars. The way we've integrated with Uber is, you know, you hail a ride like you do today. And Brave's portfolio comes with one more twist. We love it if the startups that we are backing are founded by military veterans themselves. Beyond investment and enrichment, she hopes to give those founders advisors who speak their language. Not everyone's going to be able to relate to me telling a story about my time in Afghanistan where I took point through a minefield because I wasn't comfortable asking the junior guy to do it. Gregory Hakey spent two decades as a Navy SEAL. It taught him to handle the unexpected. SEALs will pick up new skills like you would not believe. For some veterans, it turns out change management can become a business superpower. I think with military personnel, they've dealt with a lot of those outlier situations through their careers, situations that aren't necessarily addressed um, in a manual, in a standard operating procedure. Bryant Ling was a Navy pilot, then worked in federal law enforcement. Now he's wearing a new hat, investor in Brave Capital's new fund called Milvet Angels. We have a group of 100 plus successful military veterans who have become actors, astronauts, successful business leaders. And together they're pooling their money to back a new generation of fledgling startups, veterans investing in veterans. It all makes one of Fu's earliest mentors pretty proud. I knew Ernestine was 
destined for great things. It's going to help the veterans, it's going to help Silicon Valley. I don't have any question about that. Former Stanford Law School Dean Tom Ehrlich was here before most of the big tech companies. Now he can't wait to see Silicon Valley's next chapter and the role his fellow veterans will play. We're about to see another huge revolution going on in artificial intelligence, and aren't we lucky to be here to watch it?